And here I am. Hello and welcome. Yes, Doom, I'm live. Yeah, I decided to come on live. It's a public holiday here. Uh, so I'm a little bit bored at the moment. So it's the afternoon and I could be sitting and watching the footy, but I decided that I would spend the time with you guys instead. I hope you're all doing really well. I um, hope your Easter's been good. And uh, yeah, I hope everything's going okay for you all. So I want to talk a little bit about the Browns a little bit because uh, Janelle posted something on her. I'm going to just turn my video off because that's not a good, I've got it frozen at the moment and it's not a good look for me. It's just like, <laughs> I'll try it again in a minute. But anyway, Janelle Brown posted something. I'm glad I'm laying in bed and my feet hurt. You'll help ease the pain with laughter. Well, I hope so. And if my little, oh, you worked 10 hours today, Doom. Oh, ugh. now if you were in Australia, you'd be on penalty rates, public holiday rates, which is double time. Uh, and because a uh, double time and a half. So it's your base rate times 2.5. Uh, yeah. Because there's also a sun, so uh, if you work Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday, the Sunday rate's higher than normal rate. So it's double time and a half. For today, you're on, I think, time and a half, the Monday rate. So, uh, yeah, so it depends on when you work, depends on what rate. Your rate of pay changes depending on the industry you work and what you work. But essentially, yes, public holidays. So weekends, people like to work weekends because you get double time and a half generally and it's double your base rate so um the minimum wage in australia i think is uh, 17 dollars an hour so that is the minimum that someone can be paid for working so yeah but anyway i think it's different i don't quote me on that i need to look it up i've just done it from the top of my head but you know it's uh it it, it, it it's you know it might even be 19 dollars an hour now but it's you know <laughs> Public holidays is a good time to work in Australia, but anyway. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it's Easter Monday, so um, all the chocolate's been marked down, so I've gone and to the shop and raided the chocolate because why not, hey? Um, oh, also, like today's, like today, one of the things that is traditional for, uh, for uh, Easter Monday, because we call it Easter Monday, is the stall gift. Now, stall is in country Victoria. And they have a famous uh, foot race. It's one of the few that does handicaps. However, we have a storm that's currently on its way to Melbourne at the moment. But um, it's a, <laughs> it it was so it's usually a thousand meter race, and uh, which is the store gift gift, and it's a handicap race. So uh, this is a marathon. This is a Australian Olympian, and he was he apparently came from the behind. And came through and won the heat. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that um, it, it had been fine this morning, but now they've they've said that it's a regatta. They've called it the store regatta because the whole place is flooded. Um, <laughs> he said, Peter Bowl says. Crazy weather, but what a great event. He was fourth in the 800 metres in Tokyo. He says, I haven't raced in rain like that since I was a kid. Um, it's a 1,000 metre invitational handicap. So he he was last. So it's a really weird the way that they do it. So it was supposed to take place a couple of hours ago, an hour ago, but it hasn't. They've got to wait for the lightning to pass. and. Um, for the track to drive out. But, yes, so that's on its way to us at the moment. It's uh, not looking very good. It's also, you know, April Fool's Day and there's been quite a few amazing little April Fool's jokes around. I love – I've loved some of the sporting team's April Fool's jokes. Some of those have been really good. Um, but, yes, it's uh, – there's a really bad storm. So if the storm hits me and I disappear, hey, I'll be, you know – 
that that's the reason why. But Janelle Brown posted on her Instagram uh, a day ago, and I thought it was very poignant. Now, I noticed that Mary had talked about, um, you know, I said, could Mary have been talking to without a crystal ball? Well, this one could be as well because Janelle finishes her post with many have – I'm sharing some of the photos. Many of you have seen a lot of these online, often with snarky comments. Who do we know that made snarky comments about the photos? And she said, but it was a beautiful moment for us. So let's read what she says. It's been a hard, it's been hard to get my brain to work properly again. I'm so grateful for the outpouring of love and support I've received these last three weeks. The support has been overwhelming. I, I am honoured. So many of you shared stories of your loved ones. So many of you wrote of your thoughts and prayers. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Garrison was honoured by family members by his National Guard unit last Sunday at a celebration of life ceremony. He would have loved it. I am sharing some of the photos. Many have, many you have already seen a lot of these online, often with snarky comments accompanying them, but it was a beautiful moment for us. So she shared this one. And that one. And, I mean, that's the one that... Um, so they were the photos. So the fact that she said that you have, many you may have seen already online with snarky comments would imply that she's calling out those people that have made comments about it. And we know the person who has made lots of comments about it. So, um. That's what I find, that's what I found to be very interesting. Do you think, do you think that was a go at her? Or, um, or do you think that that's just a coincidence? Um, also, I mean, she also posted this and again, it says, Happy Easter, everybody. I have been more grateful for my faith this year. The remembrance of the saving is the gift of eternal life. We opted for the NC Beach today. We were able to stream the service from Maddie's church at home as we didn't feel like fighting the crowd. The weather was beautiful and the, and the kites flew easily. Yeah. So, again, she's enjoying, she's talking about how important the faith has been for her and you know for some people that is what gets them through those hard times if those people who have faith or some people uh have something that they believe in that's what they they find out you know that that helps them get through um so yeah that's essentially where we where we are at the moment i just you know having the general chat I've got 58 people online hopefully you can all say hello to me and say hello out there and um I'm seeing there's still lots of drama online there just seems to be drama everywhere I'm too, I'm too busy to be involved in drama at the moment got, I got enough of my own without trying to you know get into anybody else's <laughs> I get myself into enough trouble easily. Oh, pardon me, excuse me. So, so tomorrow it's uh, back to work for those people that have to work. I'm on school holidays, but um, but I think as I alluded to in my short, it used to be Bank Tuesday, and so we used to get Tuesday off as well. But that changed um, along the way, and uh, plus, you know, they're they're closing down banks at a really fast rate at the moment, anyway. And uh, I was reading, um, you know, there's lots of stories around people having to uh, justify why they're taking money out. Although there was a story that I was reading today where that was that did actually come in handy 
because the woman was a scammer, I was being scammed, and they were actually able to stop that, which I think is a good idea. Now, uh, oh, here's something very funny. So Katie Joy's hacked, allegedly hacked page, and I'll say allegedly hacked page because I'm still not convinced that it's hacked. Um, I still have issues with, it, with, with, with whether or not it's hacked or not because of the fact it's, it's still growing. The channel's still growing. It's got hundred and it's got hundred. Like it's still got one hundred and thirty-two people following it. And why hasn't she done something about it? She has to be, in my opinion. She has to be getting some type of um, thing from it. But this is what I find to be funny. Uh, <laughs> this is the funniest thing of all. Is have a look at this content. I am so confused. Is without a crystal ball hacked? I see she keeps posting Mormon posts. I know. It's ridiculous. And why Mormons? She's an atheist. <laughs> That's what I find to be funny. Um, I, think, I think she is hacked, they're saying. I think she's hacked. But... With that, the without the crystal ball full page has been, um, has actually been showing Mormon Mormon stuff. So this was yesterday. So it's it's fascinating that that's Easter Sunday. There was another one I think someone said. Oh yeah, and then there's cat photos. And dog photos, but it's all from I Love the Book of Mormon. <laughs> and of course, which is really interesting to have the royal family. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> and ah, that awkward moment when you drive your Chevy to the live in the levees and drive. <laughs> It's actually funny. Oh, yes, this is what I thought was funny. Um, yeah, so again, this is from the hacked page, the alleged hacked page. And then someone says, aren't you an atheist? And someone says her page was hacked. It's very quite, it's quite, it must, it's interesting because why hasn't she told us that the Mormons have allegedly hacked her um, her page. Oh, that makes sense. You're an atheist. Don't tell me I'm Christian. Surprise me from you. And then someone says anything is possible when you lie. But why why hasn't she told us? Oops. Why hasn't she told us that? Um, that the Mormons have hacked her page to stop her talking about the AUB. Based on everything that's posted on her page, that actually is quite plausible if you were going to say that. But my issue is, is that she stopped talking about that page. She had 132 followers on her, on her, on her hack page, but she's got 18,000 on her new page. Now, why? Why wouldn't you be doing everything in your power to get the old page down or and have all of your followers come into your new page unless you're benefiting from that money? She posted a picture of her, of um, Mario, of her watching Mario with her son this morning, but she's, um, she um, obviously removed it. So, but that's, I mean, and this is the content on her other page. So she's got Mormon stuff and religious stuff on the hacked page. And on her, she's got, 
this stuff. And there's 132,000 followers on one page and only 18,000 on this one. Wouldn't you, as I said, wouldn't you think that you would be trying to get all of your other ones back across? Yeah. You know, oh, hello. We're up to 102. Hello, everybody. I hope I haven't scared you away. Um, I just don't understand it all. I don't understand why. And she's got, I mean, I know she's got 134 followers on, 134,000 followers on Instagram, but still... Because she's, um, actually, I want to just look at something too. Oh, interesting. What, what again is interesting is that she's verified on Instagram, right? But she's not verified on Meta. Right. I just want to see whether the other page is verified. No, that's not verified either. No, but have a look. Yeah, but see, this one says 132,000 followers. See? 132,000 followers. And it goes to the same, has the same, the same information. We're going to click that, see where that, let's see where that goes. You ready to see where that link goes? I'll share it with you for transparency reasons. So she's got her, her hacked page. Looks like it's, yes, her hacked page goes to her Instagram page account. Isn't that interesting? Let's click on that. Oh, look. Oh, look at that. She's got all these links. Follow me on Facebook. So let's have a look at this one. And we'll look at this one. And we'll look at... All right, so we'll start with this one. See where this one goes. Oh, look. There's her private page. So she's, she's shared this one as a link. I don't accept friends' requests of people I don't know. Check out my page without a crystal ball, which is the hacked page, people. She's telling people to, to go to her hacked page. Apparently, she's a digital creator and she works as a blogger and a YouTuber. It doesn't say she works as a journalist, by the way. Check out my page without a crystal ball. So this is the tab. So, yes, yeah, so she does have that. She does have her, her link. Uh, her links do go to that, to the new page. Her links go to the new page and her private account. She has a private account. So there we go. I don't accept friends. And it's just another place that she regurgitates everything. She started as a blogger and YouTuber. 
Hello, Harrison. <sighs> Even her Instagram will tell us that she's a blogger. Hello, Gracie Lee. Yeah, so even that says that she's a, a blogger. It doesn't say anywhere about journalist, uh, by, the, by the way. So we've got, we've got this. So we've got one, which this one's allegedly hacked. We've got this one, which is in her own name. So that's two Facebook accounts. <laughs> Doom says Harrison behaved tonight. Yes. And then we've got three. So there's three YouTube pages now at the moment, currently. And I think there's without a crystal ball and there's without a crystal ball too, as if I remember rightly too, that she had. We've found how many, we've got a couple of social media pages that we've got now. Just waiting to see whether this loads. Yeah, there you go. Without it, there's another one. Without a crystal ball, too. There we go. In this one, she says, a blogger, reality TV junkie, cult debunker, hu humanist, animal lover, and snarky is what she says here. Um, and. This is where she's kept all her Duggar stuff. Look, look. It's all her Duggar stuff. So now we've got three, three Facebook pages, two Instagram pages that we know of. So there you go. And this one's got 22,000 followers on it. So there you go. What are your thoughts on all of that? So, I'm still here, guys. So I thought I'd show you some April Fool's jokes that happened today because there were some really funny ones today. And um, cause I saw some really good ones today. And... Um,
and you know you might get an idea of what uh what you can do for april fool's day what did april fool's day say after it won an award prank you <laughs> <laughs> I saw um, a, 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 motor, a motoring brand called Super Cheap, Cheap Auto uh, had an ad today that uh, was offering drone deliveries. <laughs> and it was obviously an April Fool's, a Fool's brand prank. So this was, this is called the best April Fool's pranks from brands. So Harrison, there's another joke for you. All right. DIY read um <laughs> DIY retailer tool station launches a trade inspire fragrance line pure pure tradey who wouldn't like to smell like sawdust so they saw launch the of three trade inspire fragrances sawdust seduction plumber's paradise and welding whisper uh, Lakeland creates the first diamond air fryer. <laughs> oh, look at the air fryer. It's got 52,000 diamonds. Wow. Hello, Lulu. Uh, Doll releases ham and pineapple in a can. <laughs> oh, dear. Imagine. So that's. Hello, Lulu. How are you? Uh, <laughs> minty breath. Um, okay. As I said, I saw a couple of good ones today. A couple of uh, Pizza Express transforms moving carriages, a uh, train carriages into moving pizzeria. Um. Kentucky Float Submarine World Tour. <laughs> Does sound good though. Um, <laughs> every rolls out roller skating couriers. <laughs> Baybell releases spicy Inferno cheese. A moon pig branches into dating. That'd be interesting. Actually, I got I got something about an a place today that says, "Oh, we've launched a dating app," and I thought, "Oh, I wonder whether that's a joke or whether it's real," because you know it's April first, as I said. Got no idea whether it's real or not. Um, pickle haters need not. Honey Burger launches Quattro Pickle O Burger. Huh. Mouse and grape combines wine and cheese in a can. Oh, interesting. Some of them go into so much detail, don't they, to do their, for their pranks. Yes, I saw Super Cheap Eldo uh, and then I saw some players coming out of retirement to, for their team. Um, yeah. Now, one of the pranks I did this morning was I said that um, in the AFL, uh, Harrison's team won the the premiership, but my father's team lost it. And I said to Harrison that they decided to give it to his grandfather's team, and 
that they discovered that they'd made too many umpiring mistakes for them to win it. So that was my my um, prank to Harrison. He just he just ignored it. <laughs> uh. No, that's not good. That picture. Let's have a look. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look at some other April Fool's jokes. Yeah. If you're on the replay crew, um, say hello below. So say hello and leave a comment. All comments. You know, I do read all the comments. I don't reply to every single one. I do try. But I don't reply to every single one. It depends. Um, so, yeah. Always a bit wary when things come on, uh, when things you know happen on uh, on the on April Fool's Day, because you don't know whether it's a uh, whether it's actually a prank or not. So I always a bit wary, and I just wait. And if it's still there tomorrow, I wonder if I wonder if they say um, if when they follow up with why haven't you paid your bill, and you go, well, I thought it was an April Fool's prank. I thought it was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> I wonder whether that would work. <laughs> oh, dear. Mm. I will say the problem with Katie is that whenever she deletes something, somebody has a copy of it. So she's deleted, this was deleted off her Instagram. OMG, Super Mario Brothers, the movie was such a blast to the past. My buddy wanted to watch the movie with me since Super Mario Brothers is my favourite game. Her buddy. She's talking about sorry, I just had to have a drink. Um is she talking about Toad as her buddy? No, I know she who she's talking about, but you know. Um, yes. So the king was out, I think, for, for, East, uh, for, for Easter, so that was good to see him, King Charles. Um, 
I don't know whether Princess Kate was there. I haven't seen if she was out, but it doesn't matter. But I was, you know, it's pretty tough. Though I did read somewhere that somebody was saying that he, he's he been given a timeline of how long it, it would take and that really what's happening is that William's preparing for the next stage. But they're really worried about um, George because he's so young. Because we don't know yet. Mm. So, question for you all: Do you have more east? Do you eat? Do you have more eggs? What do you think will happen with the seven M case? The outcome. Well, we've got a long way to go, Lulu, with the 7M case. We've still got to do the um, the timeline of events. And we need to um, 7M or discovery. Discovery still needs, well, has to happen on both sides yet. So we don't know, we don't know what arguments are going to be over discovery. Um, we've just shown that she's got five, well, we've found five social media accounts. So that's not including Twitter. So there's five accounts at least there that we know of. Um, if she decides to argue all the way, I mean, they could be arguing, you know, for another six months yet. Then they've got to look at witnesses. They've got to, you know, compile it all. She keeps saying it's not going to go anywhere, but it's still going. You know, you can... You can say, well, it's it's frivolous, it's whatever, but it's still it's still active. I still maintain that the best outcome for her is to settle. I mean, that's really the most lawyers would prefer to not actually have to argue in court. Um, they would prefer it all to be sorted out beforehand if they can. Um, and that is that is usually how most courts would like it to be done. They don't like to, the courts don't like to be um, sorting out people. Do they have do they have enough evidence to do damage? Um, it comes down, Lulu, um, it comes down to the question of, A, whether they're public figures and they fit under the the threshold of public figures. It will come down to whether uh, she can be deemed a journalist. It comes down to a number of factors, uh, which I, in my opinion, I would say, I would say that Derek's plausible to be public figures because they're on social media and they do, they front up and they've done all that stuff. Robert Shin, I would say less plausible. You couldn't say that he was a public figure. Uh, the journalistic aspect, I think we know the answer to that. But that all of this has to decide. This is everything that the what the court has had to decide, and because. Um, her honour said that she hasn't, you know, the court hasn't made a decision about it. At some point in time, they're going to have to ask the court to decide. The court is going to have to decide at one point because one of the factors will be they'll, she will say, I'm giving journalists the privilege, and we know 7M is saying, well, you're not a journalist. And, again, her social media posts, all her social media talks about the fact that she's a content creator and a blogger doesn't say that she's a journalist. So look, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I know how I would like it to go. I um, I know how I'd like it to go. But then do you really want to see the demise of somebody and when you think about it, there's an in, there's an innocent child in all of this. Do you really want to see demise? And I don't know that I could could. could. Um, if, for example, she if she changed the way that she did things, I, you know, I, I would 
uh, I would, I, you know, may have a different view. But you've always got to remember that there are always discovery that she's been ordered to answer would be considered under journalistic privilege. Well, th at the moment, at the moment, uh, there's uh, the last instructions from the court was that the court hadn't deemed whether she was a journalist or not. She's trying to get everything under journalistic privilege, but if you remember, she's been compelled. To, she's she's been told by the court she's got to comply with discovery. She has no choice. So, um, journalistic privilege or not. And don't forget that it's under it's under the protection order, so only the lawyers get to see it anyway. It's not no one knows. Like it's not Robert Shin's not going to see it in anything that they can't take copies of it. They can read it. They can make notes. They can retell what they've seen, but only the lawyers get to see the actual documentation. And that happens in a lot of cases where there is confidential information. And in fact, sometimes. Uh, to protect sources, they're given pseudonyms. You know, um, they're given pseudonyms. In a big case that occurred in Australia because it dealt with uh, the Australian Defence Forces, soldiers were given, they were given, <laughs> they used the letters of the alphabet. You had witness A all the way up to witness P, I think, and they're all given a letter of the alphabet. The only person that knew who each person was was the judge. Oh, and the and the um and the uh, lawyer and both of the main lawyers. Nobody else did. The instructing solicitors didn't know. So only three people in that courtroom knew who they were, which was was fascinating. So it can be done. Um, and because you, you had the government at the time, you also had the government lawyers and the ADF lawyers in there to make sure that no secrets were actually were done in public. So a lot of that court was closed court too. Again, because it, 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 it involved national security. Yeah, and yes, her child would benefit if his mother wasn't pushed. Well, yes, that is true. He would benefit from that. Yes, that's true. But also, the the in, uh, I'm talking more about income source, Lulu. I mean, Toad might actually have to go. Toad might actually have to go out and get a job. Well, she did. She did work before she became a YouTuber. But look, she, there's nothing to say she can't be a YouTuber. She's just got to change the way that she does things. You just got to change the way that you do things. I mean, I look at how I started now and, you know, So, you know, or maybe he needs to record some more albums. I don't know. There's just a whole pile of interesting things there. And I, as I said, I don't know. For me, if she, you know, just was a little bit more... Uh, Showed a little bit more empathy.
I don't think she's capable of any time or time. Yeah, look, as I said, she can... I think if she didn't accuse everybody of being narcissists, um, SA, you know, uh, accuse everybody of SA and all the other stuff that she's accused them of, because she accuses them all the same. There's the same list that she runs off, she runs down, and, you know, it doesn't matter whether it was 7M and Shin or whether it was the Browns or whether it was Gothard. She uses the same allegations with all of them. Now, one or more may be guilty of one or more of those things, but you don't put everybody in the same basket. It's like attacking the the Catholic Church for what a few people have done. And if you look at how big the Catholic Church is and how many people we know that have committed crimes, it's a very small percentage. And that doesn't mean that everybody in the Catholic Church is bad. It's just like when you have a school teacher that does the wrong thing, it doesn't make every school teacher bad. Um, because, you know, you, you can't tarnish a whole school community for the behaviour of one teacher. And so you can't say, maybe she's hoping to be right one out of a hundred times. Well, that's true, but how many times do you have to be sued before you learn that? That's the other thing. I mean, look at what she accused uh, Todd Chrisley of, some of those similar things. Look at what she look what she uh, accused um, um oh what's her name what the Westbrooks of you know just because you're a you can be a, a bad person. Um, just because you're a you know, just because you're a bad person doesn't mean that um, you're guilty of all these other things as well, you know. And just because you're a good person doesn't mean that you have good morals or integrity, you know. It, it, according to KJ, being sued as badge of honor, yes. Well, it's it's not. It's very stressful and very expensive. Hence why she's had to, um, unfortunately, milk Garrison's passing so that she can get get all her money. That's un and that's really sad that she's done that. Well, I, and that's the other issue if. The judge does rule KJ journalist. Yes, it does open the floodgates for a lot of other people to deem themselves journalists. And it would, in my opinion, devalue journalism. In my opinion. Well, everybody else is a narcissist, Lulu. She's not a narcissist. I'm But I think what's telling Lulu is that if you look at her social media accounts, she doesn't say that she's a journalist on them. She says that she's a blogger and a YouTuber. They're different things. And again, if she's saying that as a blogger she's a journalist and every blogger's a journalist, if she's saying, um, if she's, saying uh, she's this and everybody's that, so... There is an effect of that.
Now I want to segue to the case I've been following in, in Melbourne just for a bit because something happened on uh, Thursday and I wanted to tell you this. So the judge is due to hand down his decision on on Monday. Um, he bought, this guy bought an action against um, Bruce Lumen, bought action against Channel 10 and a journalist for defamation. Now the network is making an application to introduce new evidence. Now, the <laughs> it's applied to reopen open its defence, has applied to submit new evidence in the case brought by the former Liberal staffer against it and journalist Lisa Wilkinson. So the <laughs> Tuesday at 5pm, there is an interlocutory hearing which will hear whether or not the evidence can be tendered. Now, the decision is due on Thursday. So guess what I'm doing Tuesday, 5 p.m.? So it says, in fact, it says it's been dated Easter Sunday, so it was yesterday. So Channel Network 10 has applied to reopen. This is very unusual as well. So, I mean, it would to me, it would have to be some pretty hot-to-trot evidence. A document dated Easter Sunday has been published by the Federal Court from Network 10 seeking leave to reopen their defence. Now, Mr Lemon was suing the network and the journalist over an interview with Brittany Higgins on the project about allegations she had been aired in 2019. He was not named in the segment but said that people identified him. Now, Justice Michael Lee heard evidence, weeks of evidence in the case, and it's organi it was organi it's arguing the defence of qualified privilege, saying the story was a matter of public importance and the preparation of the television segment was reasonable. Now, he is due to deliver. Uh, he's, he's due to deliver his decision on Thursday. Now... <laughs> This is where it gets really interesting because uh, we may now find that uh, everything's going to be pushed back because if if this evidence is allowed to be in, this is this is as I said, this is highly unusual. Um, so because they would have to recall the parties. And it would it would delay then the decision because oops it would probably delay the decision uh, oh, because I've just lost this camera I'm on a different camera um, just lost my proper camera here we go here we go again so I'm just pulling it up I'm just gonna have we're just gonna have a look at it to see what the document says. All right. Ooh, all right. Oh, it's not been. Okay. It's not on the. It's not on the online site yet, from what I can see. So let's have a look. I'm just seeing if I can find it. Let's have a look. Oops. Oops. So this is what the court file looks like. This is a. This. <laughs> this is what the court. The online court file now. You cannot get documents unless the in, uh, matter is public interest. They do not allow you to have documentation. But this is this is the, uh, the cross claim, first cross claim, miscellaneous. <laughs> we got the list of orders here. All right, there was an administrative list in. Okay, so it's all a pretty. It's all a bit of a mess. Here, so we're going to documents filed. I mean, one of the arguments they would have to say is why they've only just got the evidence now. What's what's gone on? And and we already know that the other side's going to appeal it, oppose it. So we we know that it's all going to be opposed. So, I mean, this was dated, this this was opened on the 7th of February 2023 and we're 12, you know, we're a long way down and now and he's got all of these going on. 
Oh, yeah. Court orders and events. No. Parties. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got here miscellaneous. We've got a hearing on the 2nd of April here at 5 o'clock. And then you've got the judgment on the 4th of April. So there is another another lot here. So <laughs> it's a pretty full file at the moment. So you can generally view orders and judgments and, and everything. So there was um here there was about uh Lisa Wilkinson was suing Channel Ten to for them to pay her costs. Uh Channel Ten have to pay her legal fees. So yeah, it's all a bit of a um and then we've got here There. So you can see here, and not, it even tells you who the lawyers are for the for representing them, who the lawyer firms are. So you can generally view our, our judgments and stuff, but if we go back and we go back a bit, we can see here all the exhibits, or everything that was put into the court here um, and affidavits and stuff, but they are all redacted versions, so there's a lot of stuff there that we wouldn't have seen. Oh, wait, on 31st of March, here we go. Oh, here we go, interlocutory. Uh, that's right, there's been another one here to interlocutory application. So let's have a look at this. So five o'clock Tuesday. I don't know whether it'll be on. I don't know whether it'll be online, but definitely I'll be I'll be around and I'll be online and I'll talk about it afterwards. Okay. So this is a cover page. So uh, every page has to have a cover page. It says up the top here that's a form 45 and it says the rule that it comes under. Then it's got here Federal Court of Australia. That's It's from the New, New South Wales Registry. So every state has a federal court office. So, for example, um, you might have um, Federal Court Registry Victoria. Um, I have Western Australia, Queensland. Um, so it... it and then it's a, this is the case number, NSD 103. That's the case number. Bruce Lerman's the, the applicant, a network 10, and another, the respondents. Um, it says the first respondent to the applicant and second respondent. The first respondent applies for the interlocutory orders set out in this application. The court will hear this application or make orders for the conduct of the proceeding at the time and place stated below. If you or your lawyer do not attend, the court may make orders in your absence. That's a standard you know, thing, time and place. So we know that it's at 5 o'clock. Then, then you've got here the lawyer that did it, the person who did it. All right, leave to reopen the first respondent's case for the purpose of adducing fresh evidence be granted, such and further orders as the court seems fit or thinks necessary. Service on the second applicant and second respondent says it's intended to give, and then that's stated the 31st of March. So that's what, what, that's what they need to submit. So the court's gone, okay, you can have it on, and so they've put that in for five, and it's late, so it's five o'clock. Usually the court's not sitting at that time, but obviously the judge has decided that it needs to be heard because. He's going to give his decision within a couple of days. This, this is this is a case that just keeps on. This defamation case just keeps on giving and giving and giving. There's a lot in it that reminds me of uh, KJ and Seven M, except we're, we're dealing with um, legitimate <laughs> journalists and um, um, we're, you know we're dealing with a big network as well. 
a major network and a major network player in Australia. So, um, and they're, they're defending, they're going down fighting. Some of the other media organisations um, settled. Now, I don't know when they're hearing this one either, but this is another one that needs to be heard. You might be hearing both of them at the same time. It should be very interesting, but anyway. As I said, this is a case that keeps on giving, and this is how I think, this is, this is how messy and complicated and complex I think KJ's case is going to be. So this one is an introductory application. Again, it says that the rule up the top, um, Bruce Lumen, Channel 10 and all, the subpoena recipient applies for the introductory order set out in this application. So somebody has been subpoenaed, a subpoena representative, and um, what they've said is, so it's somebody that was subpoenaed making the application. So what we've got here is an order pursuant to Rule 2422 of the Federal Court Rules 2011 that the applicant pay Peter Fitzsimons reasonable loss or expenses incurred in complying with the subpoena addressed to him issued at the request of the applicant dated 28th of June 2023, an order that the applicant pay Mr Fitzsimons costs of and incidental to this application and such orders as the court, as the court sees to be. So this is somebody that was subpoenaed. Um, incidentally, uh, is also the husband of the other respondent. And I don't know how that works. Um, is the husband of the second respondent. So I I don't know how that sits with that. But my understanding is from what I work um from what I've worked out is that he was working with Miss Higgins to release a book and it never got there and um he had to hand over documents in relation to that court book in, in relation to the book and so he wants the money back that's in, he's that's been incurred. That's my understanding of it all. But anyway, as I said this is a gift this is a gift that keeps on giving. And we have seen, um, it does say this hearing is being live streamed on the court's YouTube ch channel. And um, just so that you can see here as well how messy this is. Um, so there is, so, and this is the only way you get files is because it's a public interest case. And I think it may have become a public interest case because it used the Australian Broadcasting Corporation um, and quite a few of the media. So it's just given the significant public interest in this matter. And so this is the only time you can – so you've got Cross Claimants Network 10, that one's still going. Bruce Lumen and Network 10, that one's still going. Um, the ABC, that was settled, and the one through um, with Newslife Media has been discontinued. Um, so it, it is. is it does. It is being live streamed on the um, YouTube channel, and the hearing time. So yes. So five o'clock on Tuesday. I will. Hopefully they will show it because I, I. I'm interested to see what they've got. The fact that they've said fresh evidence. Now I don't know whether that fresh evidence has come from the case that's currently going on in Queensland. <laughs> Hello, Andrew, how are you? Um, oh, apparently it's around private texts. Ooh. So according to news.com.au, it's, it's, there's some fresh text messages. Um, but as I said, it's two to, yeah, so explosive new evidence in a bid to reopen the trial. As I said, this this could change everything. Legal applications. So explosive new detailing how Channel 7 obtained Brittany Higgins private test messages is at the centre of a last minute legal application to reopen. Bruce Lerman's defamation case. 
The claims are contained in a sworn affidavit prepared by his former Spotlight producer, which believed to name Mr Lerman as the source of leaks to the program. News.com.au does not suggest that Mr Lerman has provided the documents to Seven Network, only that the producer on the program claims that he did in a sworn sworn that he did in a sworn affidavit. The claims have not been tested, nor has the affidavit been read into evidence. So this is the same guy that was that booked two time assists on the network's credit card. Um, and Lerman has denied receiving a massage and said the story was bizarre and untrue and fueled fueled by a disgruntled ex spotlight producer. And the producer has now threatened Mr. Lerman with defamation. The new material is expected to detail seven talks with Mr. Lerman in the lead up to signing a deal. Oh, it came from the Hello Plan to create. So it's come from the criminal case. I wondered if that's the only way they could have got that information is from the Queensland criminal case. Um, so they play golf. So the bombshell revelations relate to documents provided to Spotlight, including material from police, from a Cellbrite report of her phone, and they're saying news.com does not, AU does not suggest the AFP or the Australian Federal Police are, are the source of the affid leaks. Uh, Mr Lerman has previously denied providing documents or photographs to the program in evidence in the Federal Court. And the... Federal Court is set to hear the application lodged. While further details are not yet known, the test to reopen the case generally relies on legal argument that fresh evidence has come to light that was not available during the trial. Oh, his previous one with Brittany, was it? Well, see, they've got to prove that they what that evidence wasn't available um, at the time. Um, Mr Lerman's lawyers have previously told the Federal Court that he's not responsible for the leaking of Ms Higgins' private phone records that were retained under subpoena during the criminal trial. An extraordinary legal whodunit emerged in the wake of the leak of a six-hour tape of Ms Wilkinson, Ms Higgins, her partner David Shiraz and the executive producer Angus Llewellyn giving their un unplugged views on the high on high-profile figures. It was first broadcast by Seven as part of an interview special with Mr Lerman and included Miss Wilkinson describing former Defence Minister Linda Reynolds as a nobody and an idiot and saying, who is this effing woman? Separately, thousands of text messages on Miss Higgins' phones were leaked to Seven and other media. Welcome to the Sydney side of creativity. So it's definitely interesting. Um, they've obviously got hold of them. And it says in the federal court, uh, Barrister Sue Chrysanthus, SC, acting for Miss Wilkinson, and it should be Dr. Matt Collins, KC, for 10 previously highlighted the barrage of media stories, including Miss Higgins' private texts. They asked for the federal court to act to comply Mr. Lerman to answer questions about whether he was involved in the leaks at the hearing before Justice Michael Lee, a request he denied. All we, are, all we seek to do is relevant to credit and it's relevant to damages is ask the applicant if he had anything to do with it. That's the purpose of the interrogatories. Um, but Matthew Richardson SC told the court he was instructed that Mr Lerman was not involved and 10 had no idea who was leaking the material. So... <laughs> I, it's uh, been a bit of a, a bit of a, as I said, it's a very interesting one. The leaked texts include private discussions with Wilkinson's husband, Peter Fitzsimons, over a 325,000 book deal, and Mr Shiraz calling Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Mr Scott, um, Scott Morrison as I see you next Tuesday. The leaked audio tape was originally obtained when 10 was subpoenaed in the criminal trial but was never made available as part of a board of inquiry into the trial. Any lawyer who obtained the leaked material through the criminal trial or the board of inquiry would have, would be precluded from providing it to others under what is known as the Harmon undertaking. So it says it does not suggest any lawyer associated with the case. So what's the Harmon undertaking? 
The rule in Harmon versus Secretary of State for the Home Department, 1983, precludes a litigant from making collateral use of documents obtained through court's compulsory processes such as subpoenas. The rule states where one party to litigation is compelled either by reason of rule of court or by reason of specific order of the court or otherwise disclose documents or information, the party obtaining the disclosure cannot, without leave of the court, use it for any other purpose other than for which it was given unless received into evidence. So um, Spotlight's producer was nominated as a finalist in the Walkie Award for Excellence in Journalism over the program, a nomination that was later rescinded. It was not prohibited in the journalism to pay for it is not prohibited in the journalism awards to pay for an interview, but it must be transparently disclosed. So they've now been able to get uh, this uh, this evidence, I guess. Um, But yes, it's going to be very um, interesting. I I don't know that it will. They will get. I don't know that they will get it in. I think it's an upward battle, but I guess you'd have to try. I guess, and you sort of would have to say that. Um, So just to also just recount, I mean, this is from a month ago, but um, it says date set for, to quiz witnesses because he's also been accused of uh, uh in other people and this is what the case in Queensland is about. So not only has he faced a, a criminal trial in, in Canberra, there's other allegations that he's done something similar. And so... Um, So this was dated February 26. Um, they will grill. There's a date in June that they will get to grill the witnesses as they have the allegations dismissed without proceeding to trial. He's facing two charges of R relating to an incident in Toowoomba in October 2021, um, and he's he's on bail and. He said that uh, the Crown, he and Crown Prosecutor had agreed to the scope of cross examination, and half a day. He's not. He's not to. He's not yet appeared in person. He was excused from December's hearing as he was attending the, the federal court at the time. Um, Lerman's lawyers had previously sought medical evidence and extensive text message records from the alleged victim. Lumen was thrown yeah. So he uh it's very strange that again um that he had to he faced a criminal trial in Canberra and now has to face one in, in, in Toowoomba. And then he's suing all the media for defamation. Uh, for talking about it. It's a very bizarre, very bizarre thing to do. I mean, there's an old saying, where this might this fire, you know? One allegation, what do you do with two, you know, what do you do when there's two allegations? Or what if there's more? You know, I don't know. It's it's um definitely some questions to be answered, and you know he's got to he's got to answer them at some point in time. And there were lots of questions in the defamation trial that I just shook my head at. 
you know, particularly when he lied and said he was with the minister when clearly he wasn't. Um, and that, you know, there's there's questions over a lot of a lot of things. And what I've found interesting is that the government still really hasn't done much about the culture of Parliament House or anything because then you had Barnaby Joyce, you know, drunk as well. You know, there's just this really bad culture and I don't know what it will take for them to realise that they've got to clean up their own, Parliament's got to clean up their own backyard. You know, you want us to take you seriously, politicians, you need to, you know, start acting properly. So anyway, I've been on for a little while now. So I know there's 141 people watching. Um, I hope you've all hit like for me um, and subscribed if you haven't subscribed, if you're just watching. I'm not the uh, I'm not the, the nicest looking person to look at, but, you know, I, I do my best. <laughs> I sort of stick with nature. This is... This is what I've been blessed with, so you know, just embrace it. So, but yeah, that's about it. Oh, um, plan to create if you're still there. Are you still wet and rainy? Did you get all the storms? I'm trying to find out whether the store gift is finished, gone ahead, or whether it's still, um, um, whether it's whether it's still all flooded out. Just says it. Uh, just says that it was um, late. Ooh, no, it's just been done. I think. I think the store gift did go ahead. And yes, it's raining there. Yeah, look, it's on and off here. It's trying very hard. Where we are, we're we're escaping the worst of it. So. Um, which, but we we we're due to get some. But most of the hu the the worst of it uh, has missed. But it looks like the store gift did did occur. Uh, Jack Lacey won the twenty twenty four store gift by an inch. Wow, by an inch. And Peter Bowl apparently was short by well, was short by an inch apparently too. I think. So that's good. Well, gee whiz, that was close. We just got a storm in northeast Victoria. Hello, Anna. You just got a storm in the northeast Victoria. We haven't had a storm yet. Although I think the it's it's coming now. I think by if I'm I'm looking at the radar. Hopefully you can see my phone. No, you know what? I'll do it this way. It just started. Yeah, look where I uh, where I am is um there's a showing a little bit of rain, but it's just um as I said, most of it is it, most of it's missing me, which I I'm happy about. <laughs> we'll get some. Like it's it's definitely raining outside, but I I don't know that we're going to get all the storms and stuff. So here's the radar at the moment. Like it is really heavy over. So here's the radar at the moment, and I'm in here. Uh, I'm in. Um, so the bit at the top, you can see um, Melbourne to the left of that. You can see Laverton. So I'm just around. I'm 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 between the the Laverton and Werribee mark on there. So I'm in there somewhere, 
and you can see it's just about ready to hit us so it's on its way but that's a bit of rain so for those of you that are interested stall it's not on that map we're going to go out further but yes there's a lot of rain coming So it might be a good time for me to finish so that it's going to hit. <laughs> but yes. Well, that's the that's 128 uh, one. This is the 256 one. Uh, this one gives you a bit more perspective. Takes it out a little bit more. <laughs> okay, stall. Uh, you can't so, so if you can if you can just to show you where stall is so if you look on the you'll see that there's a circle an orange circle around and if you go around so if we're talking like a clock if you go about 10 o'clock on that circle you'll see there's a little place called stall to the left of that is Hall's Gap to the top left of that is Horsham and then you've got up the top Donald so that's the area where the stall gift is in country Victoria so for all of my non uh, Melbourne Victoria people just so that you can see and let's go out a little bit further that's where stall is so here it is again so now we're starting to see it we've got the this one shows the border of South Australia as well so it's coming from South Australia you can see that so you can see that on the Top left, you've got Renmark, Murray Bridge, Pinaroo, Keith, Kingston, Melissa, Mount Gambier. That's all South Australia. And then you've got uh, South Australia, Victoria border. And then, yeah, so it's really, so it's come, you can see that there's still a bit coming from Adelaide there as well. Can I? Coming from Adelaide. So that, and that's, it's going all the way down to Tasmania, as you can see. Down the bottom there, Launceston. Devonport, Burnie, uh, King Island. And then this is the national one. So look at, there you go, that's the rain. There it is nationally, all, down, all the way down the, the south there. Look at that. It's all rain. So it's still coming from Western Australia. Isn't technology great? That we can see that it looks like there's a little bit in the West Australian on the west. So, yeah. Anyway, that is that is welcome to weather with Joanne. <laughs> weather with Joanne. <laughs> yeah. How do you think I'd, my voice would go? So, yeah, so we've got these are all the radars. Um, these are all the radars in, in Australia too. So the black ones are high res resolution radars and the, the uh, red ones are just uh, standard watch, standard weather watch. But, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, based on that, I might batten, batten down the hatches because it looks like it's on its way. And I probably need to, um, yeah, but my car's under cover, so that's okay. So that should be all right. So we should be good. Um, yeah. So as you can see, it's coming. There was an ad before, and that you'd hear, Marge, the rains are coming. So that's what we can say Marge the rains are coming anyway I want to thank you for joining me I hope that you've had a bit of fun well, thank you for, for the good time one day my computer is going to work properly but it's, it is old it knows it needs to be replaced um, that day that day will come where it will get replaced but thank you for watching if you could hit like and subscribe look there is channel memberships if you want to join uh, uh, support the channel further uh, all the money goes back into the channel um whether it's oh i just heard thunder <gasps> i hear thunder i hear thunder 
Hark. I can hear thunder. The other good thing about my house, and it's a rental, is that it's got roller shutters on all the windows. So we've got all the roller shutters down, so our windows are going to be protected. My car's protected, and so I'm I'm all set. So I think I think I'm good. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, yes, the thunders the thunders here, and I better get off.